Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the channel if you are new and welcome back if you are already a subscriber. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my setups for June of 2024. So we're going to go ahead and dive in and get started with the budget planner because I do want to show you kind of side by side matching spreads for the Hobonichi to the weeks. And so we'll chat through those together. So I'll squish them off to the side for now and we'll do a quick little peek at the budget planner. So I have not admittedly been doing very well through um, April and May and I'm hoping to really get back on track in June. Um, things are still quite turbulent but I feel like I've kind of been able to get my arms around things a little bit better and I am endeavoring to continue that pattern into June. Um, I've done pretty good on my dailies which is really really reassuring and I think a lot of that has been that I just really want to make sure that I'm still taking a little bit of time for myself every day. So my big things that I have kind of created as a non-negotiable are to complete my Hobonichi Han daily page, to do some type of physical activity, um, and those are really my big ones. So I'm kind of starting to add a little bit on here and there, but um, just off the top. I've got my lists broken down for what might need to be paid on each paycheck. Um, I've even already started prepaying some June things, which has been nice. Then I go through my quote unquote weeklies. So I basically try to do a reset on my $150 budget every eight days. That way I don't end up, cause I've tried every seven, but that doesn't exactly work out because then it would kind of often leave a couple extra days. So that week, that last week would always kind of be really hard. This way it works out um, a little bit better where each week is just kind of elongated just by one day. So it's every eight days that I do a reset. Um, my budget goal is $150 and that includes gas, groceries, takeaway, um, and things like that. Um, hobby related things, all of that jazz. The only things that I really don't include in that are, um, like medical expenses, um, a lot of stuff with the cat because she's actually more like I shop for her more quarterly. Um, other things that I don't include are like gift giving. Obviously, I don't want to go like super overboard, but like say I spent, you know, $20, $30 on a gift and then maybe another 10 on wrapping or something like that. Um, I try not to let that eat into the budget um, as it's not a normal thing, but I'm really just trying to get a handle on making sure that I'm not getting too... The areas that I tend to get a little bit overboard with are typically things like takeout or groceries. Um, gas isn't a really big proponent, but I also kind of, by keeping it to 150, it kind of stays where it's like about $30 on gas. It depends on what gas prices are. And I, I drive like a pretty um, cost efficient gas mileage car. So it's usually between $30 and $40 um, and then keeping it to about $40, $50 when it comes to the groceries. Um, and usually that leaves room for a takeout as well roped into that of about, you know, $30, $30 or $40 if Jeff and I have gone out together. And then um, typically we try to split that just to be fair. And then um, from there, it's kind of like extra stuff. So if I want to sock that money away and put it towards a Coffee Monster Co. release or towards vacation things or whatever that may be, it just kind of sets that off to the side. Um, but I found that doing every eight days works best for me. And then I've got a section for notes. So at the end of each one of these weeks, I can take the opportunity if to not just add up what was spent and find out if I was above or below, but it also gives me the opportunity to kind of give myself a pat on the back if maybe I came in under or maybe give myself a note. Um, so say I got a little overboard with the groceries and um, just went a little hog wild in a grocery store or something like that, as I am a want to do in some place like a Trader Joe's every once in a while. But 
the goal is to kind of keep everything in moderation. So this is a good place for notes. And then I went ahead and did a double page for my balance carrier minimum and paid. And I want to do this going forward because I've found that um, I've been prepaying a couple things, but also um, sometimes something might have like two payments a month. Like if I have an Affirm or a Klarna or something like that going where I need to make two payments on it a month, it makes more sense to go ahead and be able to see everything at a glance. So I'm hoping that that is a good little tip trick for me moving forward. And that is really it as far as my budget setup goes. It's not a lot of, it's not any stickers. It's not any decoration. I'm really just trying to get my arms around it and continue to work until I find a system that works really well for me. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And we are gonna go, we're gonna start with my Hobonichi Han and then we will hop over into the weeks once it becomes applicable. So I don't really do a ton of setup when it comes to my main planner, which is my Hobonichi Han. This is an A5 size as well, and my weeks. Um, I set up a little bit more in the weeks this month and I'll show that to you guys. And I think I'm gonna ramp that back up again, but I just don't know what that looks like. I definitely feel like I'm in a very odd transit phase. And I think it took like everything kind of um, getting really chaotic for me to say, okay, this is what I need. This is not what I need to kind of like weed out. Um, and I also think that this is a time of year where we all start getting a little fussy. Um, we're getting to that mid year point where we're like, okay, well, what have we done now? What do we want to do for the back half of the year? So we're hitting about that like squishy, uncomfortable middle of the year stage. Um, I also think this is a time of year where um, people start to, especially females, we tend to ramp up on any kind of a healthcare routine as we're inching towards, you know, shorts weather and swimsuit weather. I feel like that's another sticky place in general. Um, so to all my um, peeps out there struggling with healthcare issues and, um, getting those summer beach bodies ready. You are beautiful just the way you are and um, rock that summer bod, whatever it is. <laughs> um, so we're gonna pop over to the yearly section and I have switched things up a bit for June. Let me make sure everything is in frame and I will zoom us in a little bit. Okay, um, so I've got reading my 12K steps my water and my workouts. Then I've got log meals, my daily page, five year, project life, 10 minute and save. So I have taken out French finally after trying to track it for months. I'm not getting anywhere with it. It is what it is. I've also roped some things across the board that I've given a shot. I The one thing that sticks out to me is the custom in particular. Um, but other things I think about are like major cleaning projects that I might want to work on. I've talked about this before. Um, so I just put 10 minute, which stands for 10 minute project. And it is an invitation for me to spend 10 minutes on one of the larger projects going on in my life. So it might be the custom. It might be the closet. It might be getting my desk tidy at work. It could be filing. It could be a myriad of things that are just disorganized and just need a little bit of attention. It could be my pantry cabinets. It could be, you know, weeding through some craft supplies. I love it. I think it's great. And I don't think it ever really has a reason to go away. Um, but I like that I just said 10 minute because I do know what that means. Um, I did make sure to put my daily page on here as well as that's something that I'm just trying to make sure that I attend to every day. I know I've kind of teased this a little bit in the last couple months. I do feel like I'm getting to a point with habit trackers where I need a change. I don't know exactly what that looks like at this point, um, but I don't think that I'm going to be continuing with habit trackers at least the first couple months into next year, or not into next year, oh my gosh, into the next set, which is the next six months, um, which are these pages. Now I feel like I am too far in, so let's come back out a little bit. There we go. Oh, I didn't mean to knock things over. 
craft planche. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing habit trackers through here. I think what I'm going to try to do is maybe um, put birthdays or special events, um, trip details, almost use it like a monthly pre-planner type of thing of events that might be going on. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll put page numbers. I've also seen really cool workout trackers through here, so maybe that's an option. I'm going to play around with it a little bit and just see what I want to do. And then I think I'm going to move my habit trackers into the weekly section bar and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. Um, I haven't set one up yet, but I do want to give it a go um, a couple times this upcoming month just to see how I like it before we get too far in just in case it's not a thing and I need to continue using this. I just don't feel like, and we'll talk about this more in the May flip through, I just really don't feel like it's serving a great purpose for my mental headspace. And I don't feel like I need to be tracking this many things um, in this space. Like I feel like if I was just tracking maybe reading, my steps, my water, meals, I would be doing fine. Maybe one extra thing a week, like the 10 minute project or something like that. But I definitely don't feel like I need all this. So. And a hybrid version of this might be color coding my steps, my workouts, and then um, I don't I don't even know. I just want to play with this. This is really just stagnant, and I feel like I really just need a change from the daily tracker. So we're gonna we're gonna try some new things this month in the sidebar and see what happens. Next, we are gonna look at my monthly spread. I use the Hobonichi um, Cousin Kits from Coffee Monster Co. She's got an absolutely gorgeous botanical theme this year and with a botanical themed planner, of course I wanted to stick with that. I was kind enough to write down the two colors that I used to set this up. I used 772 for all of my little um, YouTube icons and then 312 to set up my bars for my cleaning tracker. I do want to go ahead and add this and I will remember when I'm done to clean my Brita pitcher um, and then I can add it into the kitchen list whenever I do July. Um, I know that I fell off in May and April and miss some videos. Did I miss anything in March? Now we're just getting off on a miniature little tangent here. I don't think I did. That's a lie. I missed some right here. I am going to go back and tally up what all I've missed. Um, I do know that I am, I do not write in what I have posted as the video until it's officially uploaded, just in case I want to make a change. So there's that. Um, so I need to write in a couple videos that I have already preloaded as well. Um, but I leave these blank until I've decided what video is going to go there. And then if I post anything additional, um, I haven't done that in a really long time, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. They are TCMC Q1 sub orders. I did like a post to the uh, Facebook group. I did one to Instagram here. Um, stuff like that. And I'll be posting more about the garden and things of that nature. Let me know in the comments as well if you guys are enjoying the vlogs or just like the old traditional kind of long format plan with me that I've been doing. Just so I can kind of get a gauge on what you guys are enjoying. But I do have plans to go back and figure out how many videos I missed so that I can work on trying to kind of get those back in in a somewhat normal fashion where I'm still ahead on filming, but um, can kind of filter in some bonus videos here and there until we're all officially caught up. Um, and then obviously I'm gonna be trying to prep a little bit of content because I'm going to be out of town a little bit at the end of July. So that is what the monthly spread looks like. I just do a, car, um, a cleaning list down this side. I did change up how I did kind of the extras just to keep it a little bit cleaner. And I'm quite happy with that. Um, but it is a pretty simple setup when it comes to the monthly. It's even more simple when we get out to the weeklies. 
So I think I did show this in the May flip through because most of this week is actually May, but I always try to do as much rainbow as humanly possible when I am going into June because it is Pride Month. And this is the part where I wanna grab my Hobonichi Week so that we can talk about the themes side by side. I punch out a little tab. So I do like a homemade tab and then I, oh, nothing broke. It just sounded like it did, it's totally fine. And then I use uh, this Carpe Diem sticker tablet book that I've had for a while and it has tons of little labels in it and I'm just trying to use my resources this year. Um, and so I just pull out a little label. This is the label maker I use. It's from We Are Memory Keepers. It's super simple. Um, as you can see, I've got the affirmation washi and then the dates for the 27th through June the 2nd. And then I've got all these super cute Coffee Monster Co. Um, little swatches that are in rainbow order all the way across the bottom. So we've got the Princess 2.0. I think this is cafe time something like that. Affirmations washi. This is Tea Time 2.0. This is the Winnie and Friends. I think this is the original uh, that she re-released because the other one is yellow and I quite like the yellow to be honest. Um, this is self-care. I think this is just I don't think that maybe that is a 2.0, not sure. And then this is coffee 2.0. I thought it was so perfect that it fell on a Sunday and it looks so exhausted, but then refreshed, it's super cute. Um, I opted to just go with the affirmations washi. Now, as you can see, I didn't do much of a setup for this, but next week, the, ne the next week rather, I've got a little bit more of a setup where I kind of used the line that is already in here to separate between the day of the week and the bar. And I actually finally figured out that I can draw a line all the way across. And I wanna see, cause I always felt like this was enough space most of the time. So I'm hoping to kind of get back to the roots. Sorry, I just realized I was a touch out of frame there. I just kind of wanna get back to the roots a little bit and see if this is in fact enough space. Um, I did not use a coordinating washi, I think beyond this point, just as a heads up. So transitioning to the weeks, just a touch. As you can see, that's definitely not the next week, nor is that, nor is that. I am actually trying to use every solid square inch of this week's before I switch over to a new planner. This is the layout that I ended up enjoying where I wrote the date and the day of the week really small just did a little section I still use that dividing line I think what I want to do here is maybe a mood sticker like a face or something like one of the emoji faces to depict my mood and my energy level it's also a really great place for me to do the tracking so maybe I do like a red yellow green when it comes to tracking I can put my intimacy hearts I can track my cycle um maybe put a mood, something like that. Use this for those icons basically, and then use this space to write out um, any workouts or any other pertinent things. Like if I took any medicine, if I'm not feeling well, like right now I'm going through quite a sinus issue. Again, that is, again, that sinus issue that's like affecting basically my jaw and the back couple teeth um, in my mouth, which is super painful. Um, but this ended up being the layout I had decided on. So you'll see it repeat here. I really do want to go ahead and like maybe put little post-its or something to mark these weeks just because we're starting to get a little dicey. And then here I'll end up covering, I know this is not until July, but just to, you know, kind of give you a little sneak peek, what I'll end up doing is covering this up and then using, I have some date covers from Coffee Monster Co. that I'll end up using to cover that up. So this will take up week one and week two of July. Um, and those are typically weeks that I'm out of town. That's why it's super empty. This will probably be week three um, and four. And I'm not sure if there's five weeks in July or not, but it'll continue on that way for a little while. I did do on and off again on using two spreads. I think when I end up back in the notes section and it's um, a little bit more of a free format again, oh gracious, then um, 
I may get a little bit more bullet journal-esque back here um, because I think that would just be really entertaining and quite fun. So that does it for the weeks. Pretty simple, just again, black and white, just kind of going back to basics. So jumping back over into the Hobonichi, um, then I'm going to use the onesies. I believe this is onesies 2.0, but I love this like soft rainbow look that it's got going on in the background. Then I am using the Wizard of Oz, which nothing says rainbow like Wizard of Oz. And then this is also from one of my favorite creators, um, James Burke Creative, um, who is gay. And so I definitely wanted to showcase his amazing work as is his partner and husband. Um, and he's featured in here, his little picture. It looks like he was the tin man for their photo shoot. Now I did not take this particular virtual voyage, but I still think it's awesome. And I have all of the washi from that. So, um, like I said, nothing says rainbow quite like Wizard of Oz. So I thought this would be a really great week to do that. And I've kind of been jonesing for a rewatch. So I thought that was great. This is the Pride fundraiser washi from last year. I have my fingers and toes crossed that this year she's going to do a washi again and then it's going to be the Rainbow Neighborhood and I really hope that she does and I will buy probably three rolls of it and I have been really reeled in when it's come to my washi count but I think that's going to be a three roll kind of thing because I think it's one of my favorite strips and I really wanted to use it this year but I'm still kind of hoarding it a bit. Then I decided to use the classic washi. Now she has re-released this to where it does not have any foil in the background. And I have purchased that as well. But I just thought that it would be really, really nice to have kind of a classic emojis, no color week. And the majority of this, I think it starts here and goes all the way through this week is Disney Bound with Pride begins, I believe on the 18th. I haven't decided if I'm going to participate or not in terms of like being on Instagram and actually posting. I think that really has a lot to do with um, my availability. I've even thought as far as like, okay, well, you know, can you just dress up that day and take a picture and try to let it be no pressure? Or maybe I watch a particular film with a favorite red color character of mine if it's a red day. I'll kind of see how I want to participate. Pop in the comments down below if you've ever participated in the Disney Bounding with Pride Challenge or are participating this year. Would love to hear your thoughts. But this does end out the month of June. Um, I am very excited to get into July because I am expecting myself to do lots of like nautical themed things now that the super cute washi from quarter two is here. And um, I've got a beach trip planned during that time if everything still goes to fruition with that. Um, but I think it'll be a good time to pull out like kind of all those mermaid washies that I hoard, um, use the cute new nautical washies I've got maybe use the biome washi a little bit um seasonal has like a little beach set so lots of super cute washies that i'm gonna get to pull out in the month of july and i'm looking forward to that so i hope you guys garnered a little bit of advice and inspiration from my setup for june like i said i keep it pretty simple the bulk of my kind of i don't know i definitely all of my decorating, for lack of better phrasing, definitely happens the week of that I'm actually planning. I don't really typically put too much into place because then I feel like if something goes left, it's a little bit harder to um, course correct certain things that you set up. Um, but as I said, I hope you guys got some good inspiration out of this. Let me know what your themes are for June and if you're taking... Um, place if you're taking part in any of the challenges going on if you did mermaid did you do okay I definitely did no mermaiding um it was just way too chaotic but thank you guys so much for hanging out and I do hope you enjoyed this video and that you had a wonderful May as we creep to a close and I hope that you have a wonderful June moving forward and I'll come at you guys soon with some monthly flip through videos I am doing really well on that so more to come very soon soon and we're back on schedule which is great as well so thank you guys so much for hanging on through all of the turbulence and until next time enjoy creating your own little wonderlands bye everybody